Welcome to the Bitcoin Source Podcast, the ultimate destination for all things Bitcoin. Today, we have an intriguing guest with us, Joel, a content creator with a passion for exploring the world of Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. I find white writers in the Bitcoin space super intriguing. So Joel's work in storytelling and podcasting promises to provide us with some insightful conversation today. Welcome, Joel. Hi, Dadu. It's nice to be on the show. Likewise, likewise. So, Joel, let's let's kickstart this thing off. Um, of course, we know that you work as a content writer and that often involves uh, exploring Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. What inspired you to focus on writing and on these topics and how do you approach conveying complex Bitcoin concepts in an engaging and accessible way? So there's a few things. I uh, used to write, sort of be online in my um, previous work field. Uh, actually studied um, what they call media studies in Europe. It's essentially a fancy way of saying you, you want to become a journalist. Uh, didn't finish my uni day, so I wanted <laughs> to you know go freelance and, and earn some money and not sit in a dusty old hell. And uh, yeah, basically, I was able to write both in German and English, and just started reaching out. And you know, the way it is back in the early internet days. I, I mean, I'm saying early, like mid 2010s and stuff. Uh, you know, I was the youngest one on teams. Hey, there's this thing called social media, you do it. And so you dove into these kind of things. And I used to cover a lot of stuff like the creator economy and uh, consumer technology and how basically the internet is going to change the world. And throughout that process, I discovered Bitcoin. And then I was like, oh, you know what? The internet is cool and stuff, but it's actually Bitcoin that's going to change the world. And um, yeah, sort of in mid 2017, 18, I would say, with that like first proper mainstream bull run when like all of the ICOs came in and stuff as well. I uh, went down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. I've been using it before just as internet money, paying for stuff online. And then during that time, I think late 2018, I was like, okay, I think I understand it enough now that I can write about it and that I can maybe help out with the services I was already providing to, you know, magazines, um, digital media uh, companies and agencies, and just reached out to uh, most Bitcoin companies I either used, knew, or back in the days, you know, who were coming up. And yeah, this thing that, called the Lightning Network came out and about, and sort of in 2020, I started focusing more on that, uh, just because I found the whole uh, perspective surrounding Lightning pretty much intriguing and been trying to do it ever since. It's been a bit harder the last couple of months because, um, you know, with the bear market vibes, but um, we're still going strong and uh, still fun to help out with these amazing projects. Yes, that's that's an awesome introduction to how you really got into writing. Of course, you know, we both write a lot of content and um, I've always wanted to know from you, Joel, that what was a book or a podcast that really kickstarted your journey like early in your beginnings? Before you decided to write, like what really got you inspired? I can't remember if it's like the 10 essential rules of copywriting or something along these lines. I can maybe get you the proper links for the, um, uh, the show notes and stuff. And that was basically just a book breaking down what writing on the internet is like. Uh, that was a pretty cool book in my end. And in terms of Bitcoin books, I think what really got me started was um, The Bullish Case for Bitcoin. Because that was around that time. So those would be the two books, Bitcoin specific. And like, if you want to get started writing online, who would I recommend? Nice, nice. I want to talk about Lightning, of course. You know, I, I'm really a big fan of Lightning because those micropayments are everything. And the, the efficiency and the speed of the network has really kind of trumped a lot of people talking about Bitcoin being slow or the block is every 10 minutes. So um, of course, this layer two scaling solution for Bitcoin has been instrumental. Could you share some of your most exciting developments or use cases that you've come across writing about and exploring the Lightning Network? Yeah, so like most people, I mainly went down the rabbit hole because, you know, back in the days when I started using Bitcoin, you had block times of maybe three to sometimes six minutes because you know not a lot of people were using it or the mempool wasn't full but then obviously the more people got in and especially in 2017 it just filled up and so when this thing popped up where when i discovered it it was very much experimental so you basically had to use a terminal and know how these things work hey there fellow bitcoin enthusiasts we just wanted to take a moment to appreciate you for tuning in to the bitcoin source a bitcoin conversation your support means the world to us as we dive into the exciting world of Bitcoin, blockchain, and all things cryptocurrency. If you've been enjoying our content, don't forget to hit that like button. It's like a virtual high five that keeps us motivated. And hey, sharing is caring. 
If you know someone who'd geek out over Bitcoin as much as we do, hit that share button. Finally, if you want to stay up to date with all our latest episodes and insights, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. You won't want to miss a single update. Thanks for being a part of our community. Keep exploring and remember, the future is decentralized. Now back to the episode. Um, but I was quite fascinated by being able to use it and with sort of the first um, forms of a wallet. Um, I actually bought a coffee near Angel in 2019 here in London. And, uh, you know, just the first experience I was like, oh my God, this is so much easier than taking out a wallet, possibly reusing an address, you know. Um, that wasn't that careful back in the days, to be honest. And uh, yeah, when I sort of dove down deeper, I realized, okay, so it is micropayments first and foremost, and that's amazing. And the more I sort of started digging, the more intrigued I got by the way Lightning can potentially, you know, fill these voids in the internet, whether that be um, to have an alternative to the subscription middle, uh, model. I don't think it will replace it because you could technically do subscriptions, I think, on Lightning as well. It's just that no one has experimented with it too much. Um, or just some simple things like, you know, gate um, keeping or paywalling, simple forms of content. Think of a book, you know, you break it down in chapters and you're able to read the book at your own pace and pay chapter by chapter. Just sort of these little things are what really got me down the, the lightning rabbit hole. And currently, just from the way I've been talking to a lot of the lightning clients I have and just, you know, also at uh, conferences and stuff, uh, it's really interesting to think about uh, lightning as a streaming service. And what I mean by this is, you know, we all heard the case by Strike that you can basically stream your salary every, I think Jack uses like every minute or something and you send some sets. Um, but there's really a big potential probably in the video telecom world where you can implement Lightning because it settles immediately. You basically prevent fraud because there's not these chargebacks and all of these idiotic things that take up a lot of money in the Lightning world. And um, I actually had Jose on my own podcast, which we'll probably dive down into later as well. And um, he's the CEO of Ibex. And he told us, you know, if you look at this, there's like a huge, I think, 45 billion uh, a year industry where money just gets lost on cashbacks on fraud and stuff and if lightning could potentially fill that void and even go further than that and say hey if there is something going on you just click this button reach out we can basically settle it within a few minutes um, i think that's sort of the real game changer and building more user-friendly products around it like uh, vida is doing for example with their live streaming where you can monetize your live streams directly um, sort of the stuff um, Zebedee is doing for streamers and gamers and these things. I think the more that stuff pops up, the more exciting it gets. And it's not just a cool, quick way to pay for my coffee, but it's actually a way to, you know, use an effective API online and, and really build build like a content hub if you want to or whatever you want on the internet and really get rid of the stripes, the paypals in the world who have a monopoly and we should be actually working hard on reducing that monopoly and obviously with all the benefits of, you know, bringing the costs down, having faster speeds and all of that stuff. So that's sort of the stage I'm in right now. It's a very weird place because like not a lot of people talk about it because it's, it is quite, um, I guess, abstract but um hey if that turns into great products and potentially new use cases for lightning i'm all Writer, for it i always am looking for new ways to kind of monetize my content or share it and i think the lightning network has just been really instrumental in doing that and of course it's always good to pick your brain joel on like how you come up with these unorthodox approaches to kind of using lightning to your benefit because right now if you don't have Cash App, you don't have Satoshi Wallet, some of these certain ones, a lot of people aren't really focused on Lightning as much as you think they are. But what I really wanted to get into was storytelling because with Bitcoin, there's tons of stories out there. There's tons of articles out there. And I know I've run into this issue where, uh, you know, people sometimes don't really have good stories to tell. And they kind of want to sh share these memorable moments. So could you share any memorable moments that you have with Bitcoin related stories and any significant impact that it's made on your audience? Um, on my audience directly, I would need to think about that one, but I particularly have one story where, you know, I've seen sort of the direct impact that uh, Bitcoin can have in society, everyday life. And that really was when I actually used Bitcoin the first time back in 2013 
well, I used it a second time. I used it once in 2011 to pay for a very expensive plane ticket these days. And it was that expensive that I could have bought a quite big ass private jet nowadays. So, you know, we'll get into this. But um, yeah, a friend of mine was in South Africa and was locked out of his bank account because back in the days they had these neo banks and they were quite a big competitor to um, just the regular banks that they used in South Africa, which if you think about it, were even way behind uh, what, you know, we see with like the oldest institutions in Europe. So there was no trust in that system. You would never know if your check would bounce and these kind of things. And because he was already into Bitcoin at that point, they basically locked him out of his bank account and they were like, you know, unless you can tell us how you acquired these Bitcoins, which he just mined, there is no way we're going to get your money back. And he had bills to pay. He had, um, you know, I think even flights to book for work and stuff. And so I was like, hey, you know, friend helps friends out. You know, I can I can set you up. If you already have Bitcoin, I just sent me your wallet address. And I didn't even think about it for a long time because he told me the story. I tried Western Union and these things and they all miserably failed because it was too expensive and he didn't have the bank account to cash out anyway. And, you know, that first moment I realized sending that transaction, it was basically my second or third transaction with Bitcoin at that point. And just getting his WhatsApp message a few minutes later, um, hey, it actually arrived, um, or an email. I think we still used email back in the day. Didn't, didn't think it was WhatsApp. Um, that was sort of like, oh, you know, okay, there's no one involved. Like, that is sort of the aha moment you have. And then a second story I had is actually with a woman in Iran I know who had to flee her own country because of all the political pressure that she came on about. She um, was basically teaching girls how to code and how to break free of that system. And uh, through a very cheeky way of her getting a old ass Android phone and I basically helping her set up mesh networks in the region and then through that mesh network sending a lightning transaction and, you know, filling the last like 200 bucks to get her out of country because she basically took that money, paid someone and got on the back of a truck to get out. Um, that's sort of where my mind goes, wow, that is the, the, the biggest stories and stuff that inspires me because that's literally either saving a life or, you know, making a life easier. Um, and then in terms of my audience, I think a lot of people, it's like what you said, they don't know that there are far more lightning tools out there than what's currently available. Like if you look for a lightning wallet with all the top five wallet um, posts online, you'll probably find, you know, wallet of Satoshi, Breeze and these kind of things. But there are so many different services, like think of an, um, Get Albi, for example, or uh, like Vida, I mentioned them perform, they're purely lightning only. Uh, the people working there, they really stand up for this this new innovation and they're continuously improving. And if people are able to like read an article, find these companies and realize like, oh, for example, I don't have to paste my Noster key into a web browser every time. I can actually use Albi um, and I could just keep sort of, you know, change on there, maybe like 10 bucks to do saps or just to reward someone online with great content. Um, I think those are sort of the things where I hope more of these companies pop up because um, inevitably some might fail, some might close, you know, you never know these kind of things. And the more we have that, I think the, the bigger the whole ecosystem gets. And I hope that someone, if they read an article like this, that they can take that away from it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that as well. And um, a lot of these articles that are out are, you know, I feel like there's a lot of holy grails that are out there. And I'm always interested to see the new young writer or the people that have a different perspective. I've read a couple of your pieces, Joel, and I just think that your perspective is a little bit different than some of the traditional ways that people approach Bitcoin. So it's always great to hear that different insight from a writer, because I always find that writers in this space have a completely different approach than the person that's focused on number go up or the person that's really heavy technolo technology based person. Um, I feel like the box has to be more broadened when you're a writer. You have to talk about multiple different aspects of the protocol. So I'm always happy to talk to writers because I think that their approach is so intelligent and important for the space. Yeah, I think it's just part of the job, essentially. You know, you get to talk to these companies and um, I am somewhat unfortunate as well that I can still have some clients outside of the Bitcoin space. Um, and, you know, these are mainly venture capitalists. Um, I call them my tech bros because, like, they invest in tech and AI these days. So, you know, they're these kind of breed and you sort of get the different perspective. And I think that's what I try to add with my writing, with the podcast, with my co-host Ian, where... 
it's okay to, you know, talk a lot about, hey, why do people prefer custodian services, for example, or um, why does Lightning still need to fix uh, certain things with merchants um, instead of just going on that hype train all the time? Because, yeah, the hype train is there if the price goes up, obviously, but if the price is down like we've seen this far, uh, you just get these infightings and this is not going to get us anywhere. Like, the last thing we should do is actually have those infights and, uh, you know, continue building and continue finding new ways of also experimenting with these things. And, yeah, if that means nine times out of ten, a lightning wallet breaks or a company goes bust, fine. But if that one sticks around and it potentially has a big impact into the future, um, I think that's what we should be focusing on more instead of, um, yeah, you know, lighting, writing the other top five wallets to use uh, posts every day. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. And I want to talk about your podcast that you're a co-host of, Rabbit Hole Stories. Um, you know, what are some of the most enlightening and unexpected discoveries that you've made while exploring this fascinating world and being a podcast host on your show? So mainly two things. Um, first of all, how diverse, and I'm not meaning diverse in sense of, you know, man, woman and these kind of things, but just open-minded the Bitcoin communities as a whole. I know Bitcoin Twitter sometimes is quite extreme at like you would think there's only one way of doing stuff. But if you actually invite and speak to all of the people around, you just realize like, oh, they are literally, you know, um, rocket scientists who work, uh, just casually work on like the next, um, NASA project and also tinker in their backyard with, you know, lightning automations. Or there on the other end are, you know, these philosophers who, um, come together, think about new ways, think about easier ways to explain stuff to people. So that's quite cool to see the wide spectrum of things. And the second thing is, um, we sort of came to the realization with the name, obviously, our first question is always, how did you get started in Bitcoin? And what let you down the rabbit hole? It's often either pain, you know, losing someone, um, mom, dad died, left an inheritance, they had to find a way to transfer wealth between countries or um, other stuff like lost their house, had to find a way to get back in the game. That's often sort of the first touch point, which is sad if you think about it. So people have to experience that pain and, and that suffering. But that always let them down the Bitcoin hole, uh, rabbit hole. And if if that's the way to get in, which is quite unfortunate again, but if that's the way to get in and have people come on board, um, that was sort of our light bulb moment. Because um, Ian and I, even now when we have recordings, we go like, oh, you know, another one where pain, suffering led to Bitcoin and essentially sometimes also to a complete career change, um, change of habits and all of these kind of stuff. So um, that's sort of the number one thing I take away where I go like, Super diverse, cool to talk to a lot of people, different opinions, but we can all agree on Bitcoin. And on the other end, that um, unfortunately pain is often the, the starting point or the reason for them going down the rabbit hole. Yes, I agree with that. It's either pain for me or it's FOMO. And I think, yep, it's that it's either those two. A lot of people come to the, the show talking about that. And, you know, it's just awesome to see you, you know, kind of broaden your horizons be beyond writing, because even for me, I did the same thing where I was uh, traditionally writing a lot of articles and doing a lot of different things in the space. And then over time, you realize like, hmm, how do I get my writing to be further? How do I get people to be more impactful with what I'm saying? And of course, naturally, podcasting was something that helped in that, that front. But Joel, I wanted to talk to you about something that I know you're really, um, you always talk about and you're really interested in, which is coffee shops. And I think that coffee shops have been this weird thing for bitcoiners that people don't really talk about like how you know back in the days when they had freedom fighters they would all go to pubs and have a have some ale and talk about how they would spark the revolution and i think that coffee shops are doing that for bitcoiners so could you kind of like tell us about some of your best coffee shop experiences or a good coffee shop that people can go to in your area if they're looking to write about Bitcoin and connect. Yeah, so so that is true. There's this weird thing going on with coffee shops. I just draw it down to, I think the first thing people try to do is orange pill. They're like, you know, local bakery, coffee shops and these kind of things, which is, I mean, let's be honest, we're all sort of um, coffee addicted at this point. Um, 
and yeah, that's just a weird place where you meet, possibly hang out with friends. Um, I always enjoy the, the, the vibes that are in these places. Like my local coffee shop has great music in the background. Uh, it's always nice and cool, especially now where we've got like 30 degree weather, which is not normal in London. And uh, like, instead of complaining about the rain, we complain about the heat. So it's nice to sit in and like 18 degrees Celsius and, you know, be cooled. Um, and to me, it's just the conversation, the place and the conversations you can have, because you can literally sit down next to someone and just through asking, what did you order? And talking about these different drinks, get into more meaningful conversations that happened countless times for me, which is also the reason I like sitting there and talking to people. And obviously, once to make that connection as a Bitcoin, you kind of go like, well, you know, our, our money is quite effed up and, you know, have you thought about different alternatives or like, uh, oh, you're a merchant. Um, yeah, you're paying way too much for Visa. Have you thought about the Lightning Network? And then you have to explain these kind of things. I think um, that's sort of the, 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 the easiest way for me to either trying an orange pill or, you know, just do the gospel of going out and spread the message that Bitcoin exists. Um, sometimes you can also be a bit cheeky. If you go into a hipster place, I obviously let a sticker um, on the toilet or, you know, somewhere close to the exit with the danger of being banned from that place. But um, yeah, that works. That works out. And uh, in terms of coffee shop near my area, there is a, um, I think they're a chain now. They've got two or three shops now called 15 Grams, uh, sort of delicate coffee maker with great coffee from Guatemala, Mexico and Latin America in general. And uh, they do a really good job. Um, you're very quick in and out. People are great to talk to. And there's one in Greenwich or there's also one in Blackheath, which is sort of close to Greenwich, about 20 minute walk. Um, and yeah, if you want to sit down, write, read a book uh, or just enjoy good conversation, I think the 15 grams coffee shops in uh, Southeast London are a good place to start. As a writer, you know, how do you keep up with the trends? How do you keep up with looking for this new content that people are curious about in Bitcoin. Cause I find that even for me as a writer, a lot of times you just, you're writing, but you feel like you're writing about the same things that people are always talking about. So like, how do you come, come up with new ways to write trendy articles? So in, in, in terms of, you know, research material and getting in information, I, I I'm very old school. I still use RSS. Uh, I have an RSS reader where I subscribe to, you know, the main Bitcoin uh, landscape uh, things like Bitcoin magazine. Um, I also like the blog by Unchained Capital. They're not very much news oriented, but, you know, they give these great explanations of things. Um, some mining sites, some Substacks. I think Substack is a great resource to get personalized information. Um, think about your, um, the daily Bitcoiner, um, substacks by, uh, Corey, for example, who recaps a lot of stuff or even newsletters by the lightning lab and stuff where they just publish their research. Those are great. Um, and in terms of, you know, finding what's new, um, for a long time, I just used Bitcoin Twitter, obviously gathering the information, but I then sort of found a way of listening more to podcasts and trying to really cherry pick if there are certain companies mentioned, um, I think it's of high value to also listen to, you know, material and content by venture capitalists. Um, I know Ego Def Chap uh, Capital is not that active, for example, on their blog and stuff, but they also put out content. Like Jeff obviously puts out content and the whole team as well. Um, Lightning Ventures, if you like to listen to Mars, uh, he's a, he's a great guy as well. Very funny, very entertaining. Uh, he, I think, bi-monthly publishes his, uh, interviews and such and sort of just, you know, listening to the people who also try and be early in the space in terms of investing into companies has for me been the easiest way of discovering what's new and obviously then get in touch with these people. It's big, Bitcoin, Twitter, Bitcoin, the whole ecosystem is the easiest to get a DM, get a meeting set up. And if you're interested in finding out um, how, I don't know, video streaming and, and lightning works, you know, get in touch with Lyle from Vidya. Or if you want to know how to invest as a venture capitalist into the space, get in touch with Moss, Lightning Ventures, Ego Dev Capital, whoever, and just reach out to these people because I think that's um, often a step a lot of people are missing. Word of mouth goes uh, quite a long way <laughs> in the space. Yeah, I definitely could agree with that. And, you know, word of mouth has been super helpful for me, even as a podcaster, and just, you know, connecting with people and finding out ways to be more creative. So, you know, I can't complain about that at all. So, uh, Joel, so um, 
you know, I want to kind of wrap this up, but before I do, like, can you talk about like, what do you have planned for the future as far as your writing goes, as far as like what you're trying to connect with people and do in the space? Could you kind of expound on that? Sure. So yeah, number one, first and foremost, if there are lightning companies, Bitcoin companies who need content, and I think you guys need, uh, it's not enough to post memes on Twitter all day. <laughs> we also need the log from stuff and the um, more sophisticated stuff for newbies. Uh, obviously, reach out. That That's a no-brainer. Um, if you also want to talk shop at a coffee shop in London or if you're anywhere around, let me know. Obviously, come and say hi to conference. And for me at the moment, it's just, you know, being consistent with your own stuff because obviously I have deadlines with clients and you're trying to be engaging. Um, sometimes I lack a bit of that with my own stuff. So I want to um, up that game a bit, at least publish uh, a bit more on my personal blog um, and obviously keeping the podcast alive, you know, finding new guests. And also shout out to the listeners. If someone wants to come on, tell their own rabbit hole story, uh, just get in contact. We, we can sort out the dates and hit the record button and go from there. Yes, yes, I agree with that 100%. So, Joe, before you go, could you give people uh, your social media handles and any other ways that people can find your podcast, find your articles, all that stuff, let them know. Perfect. So the social media handles, I just have to think about. Um, Noster, I'm probably going to send you my nip and my, my NPUF. That's the easiest. I would not be able to figure that out on my own. Uh, Twitter, I'm underscore J-K-L-N... Z or Z for Americans. I think we pronounce this a bit uh, differently. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn if you look for by my name, Joel Kylens, if you want to connect. And um, yeah, a podcast is Rabbit Hole Stories. It should pop up. We're not the one by the New York Times. We're well aware of that issue. <laughs> We're trying to outrank them, but it will take some while. And uh, Or the website, just rabbitholestories.co. That's probably the best place to get started. We often have our own um, socials linked there, content linked there. So um, if there's anything, yeah, reach out there and, and let me know. We might grab a coffee or uh, meet at a conference somewhere. Yes, yes. Thank you, Joel, for having this conversation. This has been instrumental in kind of pushing the, the 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 button on people learning about bitcoiners learning where they source their bitcoin knowledge from so once again brother thank you for being on the show i really appreciate it have a good one you too thank you Dado.